In this video, I'm going to talk about the work energy theorem. And they that's what it's called. The theorem is kind of a strong word for it. But we want to talk about how doing work on an object is related to its kinetic energy. So that's the the first thing and and the books can spend some time talking about where the kinetic energy comes from. Um we're just going to get it out there. The kinetic energy of an object well, I'm a particle we're going to stick with, is one half the mass of that object times the speed of that object squared. And so this is the standard form of the kinetic energy. And it quantifies then the energy associated with the motion of a particle. So the energy associated with motion. And the kinetic energy has this form essentially to satisfy the work energy theorem. And what the work energy theorem says is that, uh, let's get that back, my yellow back, is that the net work done on a system is equal to the change, sorry, a, a particle, is equal to the change in kinetic energy of that particle. So the net work on a particle is the change, if we get this in words, we can remember it, change in kinetic energy. So so a couple keywords here. One is the network. The other keyword here is particle. Particle. This is only true if the system has no internal structure that it is a particle. And we can think about that this way. If I'm doing work on a system, I'm putting energy into that system. And so where does that energy go? So if I have a composite system of different particles, if I put energy into that system, I can change the structure, how these particles interact or how they're uh, configured. Okay. But if all I have is a particle with no internal structure, if I put energy into that into that particle, the only place it can go is into the kinetic energy of motion. So for a particle then, we have that the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy, where kinetic energy is one half the mass of that particle times the speed of that particle squared. And that's it, really. So let's do some look at some simple examples. Okay, first I will do everyone's favorite example, at least mine, obviously, given the number of times I look at it. Drop an object from height h. What is its speed when it hits the ground? So I'm doing this because we looked at this in kinematics and we uh, know the answer, but I want to look at it from the concept of work so we can see the work energy theorem in action. Okay. So we're going to ignore air resistance. The object drops, and then it reaches the uh, the ground at some h later. Let's do a coordinate system. Let's call uh, positive x the up direction. All right. So there's a f uh, force on this object. The force due to gravity is the only force as it falls, neglecting air resistance, and that force is magnitude m times g for the mass m points in the negative x direction given this coordinate system. Okay, so now I want to calculate the work due to that. All right, the work then this is constant force, so constant. So the constant force then relationship between and, and a straight line 
again, we have a, a, a straight line path. <laughs> Though my drawing line may not be straight, straight line path uh, to the ground. And so I have this simple f dot uh, dx. And so they point in the same direction. So that's f and then delta x. And so since they're in the same dot product, sorry, same direction, the dot product is simply the um, product of their magnitudes. The magnitude then is uh, of the force is mg, the magnitude of the displacement is h, and so the work done by gravity is the mass of the object times acceleration due to gravity times the height that it fell. So that's equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is one half mv final squared minus one half m v initial squared change in kinetic energy is k final minus k initial uh, if we release it from rest the initial velocity is zero so i have one half m v squared is equal to m g h the m's cancel and v final is equal to the square root of two g h which is a result we already knew but now we've seen it from the concept of, of how gravity doing work on the particle changes its kinetic energy. Okay, so let's just do a, a couple other uh, simple examples. Um, the, the next one, so let's talk about, I've got the block and I am have a person who's now pushing the block uh, across the floor at some constant speed. So in this case, how does the work energy theorem apply? Is the person doing work on the object? Yes, they are. The work of the person, then this is all, we've, so the force we're gonna say of the, the pushing force is horizontal and in the direction of the, uh, well, I made that kind of longer then. So delta x is the, the distance over which the force acts. So the work done by the person is just the force of the person times the displacement, which is delta x. And so there is work being done on the person. Does that mean the kinetic energy is, is changed? No, we said it's constant speed. So this is, why am I talking about this? This is emphasizing this idea that Again, for the work energy theorem, it is the network that leads to the change in kinetic energy. So, okay, the person is pushing the block across the floor, but since it's at a constant speed, we know that the net force is zero. If the net force is zero, then the net work is zero. At constant speed, that means there's an additional force. We say pushing force, I don't know where that comes from. Let's say it's, let's say it's uh, friction. That means there's, a work due to friction, which is in anti-parallel, so the force of friction delta x. These two, since there's no acceleration, are equal in magnitude, so that means the total work is zero. And so again, the total work, or the net work done on the system uh, comes from the net force, and so if the net force is zero, the net work is zero. So okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Work energy theorem. A, uh, has to be a particle, no internal structure, and B, have to make sure you're dealing with the net work and not just from a single force. All right, and so it, our final sort of simple example, ah, not very straight line, but okay. So now I have a block we're going to say it's 10 kilograms. It's moving at one meter per second. Uh, coefficient of friction between the ground, 0 0.6. And it uh, uh, moves some distance before 
it comes to rest. So it starts with some v is one meter per second, and then eventually comes to rest. So now, what if I were asked a question similar to what we were asking previously uh, when we were looking at calculating work? What is the net work done on the block given that it uh, has some initial velocity and comes to rest? Well, it, before, th this, is, this is how we would go about uh, doing that is our, our path one. Uh, we would have to do free body diagrams, so a force analysis. So a free body diagram, force analysis that would give us, we calculate what the normal force was given the forces in the y direction. That would lead us to the uh, force of friction. We can calculate that. That's the force that's uh, um, slowing it down. We don't know how far it goes, so we would have to then uh, find the acceleration from the net force. Once we find the acceleration, we would solve the kinematics for the displacement. And then once we had the displacement, then we could calculate the work, which is the force times the displacement, assuming it was uh, constant, which we think it was. Okay, however, uh, path two, since we say this is a particle and we want the network, we know that the net work is the change in kinetic energy, which is uh, k final minus k initial, uh, comes to rest, so k final is zero, so this is equal to negative one-half mass of the particle, the initial speed of the particle squared. So negative one-half, ten, one, squared, negative five, joules is the network. So using the work kinetic energy theorem when it's applicable allows us to solve some problems much more quickly and in this case we find that the network is is negative. Energy is being removed from the system as it starts with some kinetic energy and then comes to rest.